a Christian. Cool. So I believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is necessary for salvation. Uh, and that only through him can one be truly redeemed. Uh, any other religion would be false by that account. Um, what do you know about Islam? What do I know about Islam? Yeah. Um, I know that there are um, certain obligations that I have as a Muslim to fulfill uh, based off of the, yeah, just based off the fact that I'm representing God. Um, and that's, yeah, that's what I'm put here to do. And that's what I'm, you know. <laughs> oh, so you, so tell us your story. We, I mean, you don't have to, but of course, why do you believe in Islam instead of Hinduism or any other religion? Uh, because it answers a lot of questions that people have. Um, it's, it's depending on what you gravitate more towards. If you gravitate towards the rational side of the creator, or the logical side of a creator, or the emotional side of a creator, the Quran answers all of those questions. Um, and it satisfies everyone's belief system. I find that curious. So how does it answer these questions? So in the sense that uh, answers them before people even had them. So the way that it talks about the differences between um, water, the separation between fresh water and salt water, the way it talks about um, conception. Um, these were things that weren't discovered at that time and weren't discovered until much later, but as the Quran has never been changed to the point where you could look at um, writings from the past, um, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, it's still the same. Um, so based off of that, and then looking at what it says, that it's talking about things that weren't known at the time. Um, yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good So in terms of conception, to... like, the Quran does state that essentially they a clot, man was formed out of a clot, right. essentially a clot of blood, right? right. Uh, according to, well, at least most, if you look at the biology of most people, it's simply not the case. A, a blood clot doesn't form a man's sperm. Okay. forms a human being right. uh, so in essence what then do you mean by uh, that it gives us an idea of conception so uh, so unfortunately I don't know the eyes off the top of my head however I do know that it talks about um, the cycle that a fetus goes through uh, in the womb um, yeah and it also talks about um, which obviously is hard to maybe conceptualize but it does talk about when um, the soul is implanted potentially within the fetus. Um, yeah, so it's just really cool. Well, an anatomically, a, a fetus isn't made from a blood clot. From what? From a blood clot. A okay. blood clot is a clot of blood. It's a basic collection of blood cells. Right. Um, but a fetus is more than that. It's, it's sperm cells, it's DNA, which is deoxyribonucleic acid, right. uh, essentially mixed with an egg or fertilized by an egg. Right. Um, the, the Quran seems to get that wrong. As well as other things. I mean, as somebody who's read, I, I said the Quran seems to get that wrong. Okay. As well as other things. For example, the Quran states in chapter 18, or sorry, 18 of the Quran, that Dor Karnain, uh, or the Dor Horned One, or Alexander the Great, saw the sun setting in a muddy pool. In the where? In a muddy pool. That's what it says in Surah 18 of the Quran. Okay. Now, you, you can look at it up. <laughs> it's not me stating it. Uh, but yeah, that's what it literally states. Now, that obviously would be a scientific nightmare because the sun does not set in any quarter. It's a, a gas giant that's millions of times larger than us. There was this article that I saw by NASA that was talking about how the core of the Earth is um, slowing down its rotation and that the projection millennia, millennia on for the desert. It's like it could be possible for the Earth to go back on itself instead of going, I don't know, do you, do you call it counterclockwise or anti-clockwise? Uh, it would be anti-clockwise in this country. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, it would be anti-clockwise okay, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So there was an article that I was reading um, about how that, uh, yeah, that, that could happen eventually to the earth and it's actually really cool because that's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, that the sun will rise in the west instead of the east. Um, yeah, so it's just it's really interesting to dive into and to understand it. That's both interesting. From the I mean, Quran and the hadiths as well. For me, I mean, as a Christian, Are you cold? yeah, I am cold. It's really cold. Yeah, cool, right? yeah, yeah, I know. I should have bought gloves. It's my bad. So, as as a Christian, uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh my God, uh, that way. Yeah, as as a Christian, of course, I do believe that scientific meals will kind of get us. Gold. So, what um, action um, of 
Christianity or Faction? I wouldn't say there's a fact. There's only one Christian identity well, no, that's born again Christianity. Okay, but are you like? Do you define yourself as like non-denominational or? I would be non-denominational because okay. I don't believe there are denominations in Christianity. Right. I believe there are sects claiming to be Christian. Right. That's all. That's right, right. the difference. But I, I am a born again Bible believing Christian. That's cool. I affirm what the Bible says, and I affirm that Jesus Christ truly is risen. And he truly did die. That's what, that's what I believe. Now, coming back to the Quran, then, I mean, the fact that the sun sets in the mighty pool, surely, if this is to be believed, and of course, when we read the hadith, you heard of hadith, by the way. When we read the hadith, of course, Muhammad says it sets in the mighty spring. If you're to read this in its most literalist sense, that would mean that a gas giant somehow is setting inside of a water like pool. This, of course, violates any scientific um, decree at all. Like, because it's, it's ultimately impossible for that to happen. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's not it, though. I would say that the Quran's view of women, for me, is a problem. As somebody who read the Quran multiple times, uh, I can tell you, Surah An-Nisa, have you heard of Surah An-Nisa? Yeah. Yeah, Surah 4 of the Quran, stipulates in Ayah 24 mm -hmm. that as a Muslim, a Muslim man can take sex slaves. Can what? Take sex slaves. Can, sex. Okay. Yeah. So a Muslim man can aren't engage the, in Texas. Aren't there examples of concubines in the Bible as well? Uh, so the concubinage in the Bible, mentioned in Deuteronomy 21, in fact, is not a form of, a, of taking multiple wives or sex slaves. You only need to take one wife. That's what Deuteronomy 21 stipulates, and you can look this up yourself if you've got time. So, sorry, in which book? Uh, in, in the book of Deuteronomy 21. Okay, so the Old Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament, not the New Testament. The New Testament doesn't stipulate this. In fact, right, 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 yeah, Jesus yeah. states... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Jesus says in Matthew 6 that a man is supposed to be a man of one wife. So you're supposed to have one wife. I cannot take a sex slave in this testament. But in the Old Testament, for the tribe of Israel, they could take sex slaves. Okay. They could, right. But it would only be one sex slave. They had to marry that woman and they had to wait a month for that woman to obviously mourn for the death of her parents. Because in a warlike situation, you could take a girl captive and obviously you've killed her parents. So I mean, God's like, well, hold on, you've humbled her. So wait for her to mourn, wait for her to do And if you wish to marry her, then you can marry her. But once you have married somebody under in, in the Israelite covenant, you can't go back on that. You have to treat her as, an, as, sorry, as a Hebrew Israelite person. That means she has full rights to leave your shorts, full rights for divorce. And she has- the same for Muslim women? Uh, so the Muslim, woman, the Muslim woman can divorce, but in the case of the sex slaves, I don't see any presence that in the Quran. Again, the, the, the Quran says of those captives who you take of your right hands, you may possess them and, and if they're not married. So, so uh, I haven't obviously read it. I didn't, I, was, I didn't just get finished reading or anything. Oh. Um, my understanding of sections like that is that that is speaking to a specific group of people during a specific time um, for them not to be later applied to. Because I think if also if that were the case, I think that would probably be happening now, um, which I haven't heard of that happening anywhere. Um, so I, I'm going to go with my gut on this. Again, I'd have to double check for sure, but um, I'm, I'm fairly confident that that is said for a specific group, for a specific time at a specific point in history. Well, according to the hadith, which I've read, um, the reason why that specific surah was sent down to Muhammad, revealed to Muhammad, was because Muhammad's men wanted to have sex with the captives they had taken. This is according to Sahih al-Bakari. Okay. You don't have to take my word on it because I never told people to take my word on it. Go and look this up online, it's freely available. Uh, but yeah, at that time, they were, they were basically sent this Quran oh, yeah, down so they could have sex with these slaves because they were reluctant too. Because this is a culture that were basically interested in marrying. They weren't interested in taking sex slaves. But Allah so sends this down. It was for them. Yeah, at I mean, a time. it was sent down at that specific time. For them. But the Quran doesn't stipulate for them. This is okay. where it gets interesting. Okay. The Quran doesn't state it's for them. Okay. It never states that. Okay. It just states as for those those who your right hand possesses. And this is talking about every Muslim, not just one. It doesn't stipulate one sort of Muslim. And I don't see that anywhere in the Quran. Okay. There's other instances, for example, where um, you can marry four wives, for example. And that seems to be taken for granted. But so the ruling with that is that each wife is meant to be treated equally, fairly, both financially, physically, emotionally, all aspects are meant. And if the person, if the husband is not able to satisfy those, then he shouldn't be doing that. Understood. That is how it's meant to be. And at the same time, I'm obviously I can't speak for everyone. Uh, and different areas, maybe depending on 
socioeconomic status, maybe they kind of have to, just for whatever reason. Um, but I don't think the majority of women would enter that kind of relationship if that wasn't something either they wanted or were at least okay with. Um, and again, that's not something that you see a lot of people doing. Um, yeah. But if they were able to be taken as sex slaves, and this comes back to your original point, if they're able to be taken as sex slaves, surely they don't have a choice in actually involving themselves in this kind of marital state. Um, I think that when you look at the way women are treated in Islam, I can safely say that uh, the, that they would definitely be considered that if a woman didn't want that, that wouldn't be the case. You look at the way women are treated um, in marriage, you look at how men are called to lower their eyes. Um, I think, look at the way women are treated going into a marriage, going into a relationship, or the courting process, what that looks like. It wouldn't make sense, and I think it would be hypocritical for a God who has obviously created women and said, treat them with respect in this way, just to then say, oh, just kidding, if they say no, it doesn't matter, go ahead and break them. That's essentially what you're saying, that that section is allowing the men to do, would be to go and rape women if they wanted to. They would have to. And I don't think that, that would make sense for a God who, to be dichotomous in that way. I, I think, but, but that's the issue with the Quran, it often is dichotomous. For example, when, when you read, of course, them saying to sex slaves, Right, you also read in the Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, or Surah 2 of the Quran, verse 223, that your wife is a tool. Go into her whenever you wish. Of course, in Surah 4, verse 34, if your wife disobeys you, you're to do three things. First, you're to separate from bread. Well, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to first correct her on this point. If she refuses to be corrected, then you're to separate beds with her so you're not to sleep with her. And the third is to strike her. The word used there is Daraba, which means to literally strike. Again, you're not, we're not found these rules concerning men right. in the Quran. So if we, were, if, if we were to read the Quran as it is supposed to be read, in terms of how Muslims view it as the revelation of God, it doesn't stipulate that there's fairness or world treatment towards women. Again, the, the Quran says that the testimony of two women is equal to one man. That's a fact. So we're not equal. According to Islamic rule, we're not equal. I mean, according to Islamic rule, I'm obviously I'm a Catholic. According to Islamic rule, but According to his like, jurisprudence, with the man is not equal to him. Oh no, they're not meant to be equal. Right. No, of course not. No, so the man, the man is meant to be the head of the house. He's meant to financially provide for the woman. He's meant to give her everything that she needs. Mm. And if there are things that she wants that he's able to provide for her, then he is obligated to do that. Mm. With that being said, of course, it's, there's going to be different rules for both of them. Um, yeah, it's not. Uh, I think there's a there's a difference between not being equal and not being fair. Uh, I think you can be not like perhaps I'm not explaining it well. Uh, some people are logical. Some people are creative. Like they both bring something different to the table. Um, and I think I think that's the setup essentially, where it's like the man has. Um, rights over the wife and the wife also has rights over the husband and the roles that they play in a relationship are very different but they're supportive of each other um yeah does that yeah. make sense no no it makes sense and i understand that point i would just briefly say that ultimately the quran doesn't have that view they they of course if a man is logical versus creative these are different states of intellect right understand that but in the case that you're in a marital union with somebody you expect to be treated with some sort of human decency. Oh, of course. Of course, if it's the case that I can take my wife and have sex with her whenever I want to, mm -hmm. in this day and age, that would be considered mar marital rape. Mm -hmm. And considering this Quran is supposed to be, evidently, for all mankind for all time, supposed to be the highest moral principle. Wait, sorry, do you know what time it is, by the way? Um, time, oh, time, okay. time. Of course, um, it's 719. Okay, I actually really have to go. Oh, no problem, no problem. Plan, but, um, um, did you get a Bible from my colleague over there? No, actually, I uh, I was a Christian for like four years, just oh, in the enough. middle of that. That's interesting. So it was yeah. pretty interesting. So. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. it'll, it'll be good. To, obviously, you're in a rush. We're good to have a conversation about that. If you're up for it, I mean, you could take my uh, email. If you want. I don't really mind. So we can have a further you conversation. Seem to know about what you're doing. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Um, What's your source? Yes. What's your source? Hadith and Quran. Can you turn up? 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 Can you turn up?